Hey, what's up, you guys? Great to have you back. I'm Sean David. Welcome back to the show. If you take a look at the game from the 1970s until today, then it's certain that the game changed in countless ways. But on the other hand, there are also some things that remain even from the 70s until today. For example, in the 70s, NBA players wanted to be stylish and flashy. Well, same goes for today's NBA. But usually, if we're talking about stylish, we're talking about dunks, alley-oops, nice passes, and so on. But in this video, I want to talk about NBA players that shot the stylish granny free throw. But before we start with this video, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I would say, let's get right into it. So to the old school fans, I'm pretty certain you expected one player in the beginning, but I wanted to start with somebody else. So if we're talking about Wilt Chamberlain, we're talking probably about the most dominant player who ever played in the NBA. The Big Dipper, a guy who averaged 50 points in a single season, who had 100 points in one single game, a guy that averaged over 20 rebounds a game, simply put, one of the best players of all time. one star who decided to give the underhanded method a try. Notoriously poor free throw shooter, Wilt Chamberlain. Well, I never really got to talk to Wilt about his free throws until after he had been retired and I just joked with him. I said, you know, you should have come to me. I admire the fact that you tried underhanded at one time. I said, but your technique sucked. Big guys have a tendency to grab the ball. I actually saw this and I think to this day people don't believe it, but he, he, he wasn't at the top of the circle, but he was about three steps behind it on a free throw and he ran to the free throw line, took off and dunked the ball. And in the rules at that time, you could. I think I could have been very definitely instrumental because I was chairman of the Basketball Coaches Rules Recommendation Committee. And I explained to the coaches at the convention what I saw and said that, you know, something's gonna have to be done so that we, you know, don't have guys that can dunk the ball on the free throw line. Well, Chamberlain going to the foul line. Chamberlain missed again. Chamberlain is 0 for 4 from the foul line. Chamberlain, big number 13. He missed it. He is not a great threat at the foul line. Though he has done better, I think, this year than any time in his career. Next to second. The basic problem with the big people is small people are teaching them how to shoot a free throw so that the big people have too much motion in the shot. And so many things go wrong. They cannot soften the shot up enough because they're too strong. Now, I'll give you an example. You mentioned Will Chamberlain. I saw Will Chamberlain once. We all, if you followed the game way back then, he was a notorious poor free throw shooter like Shaq and like Howard and, and, the, and the guy Jordan in this era. And um, I saw him go to half court and make 20 out of 25 free throws from half court. What an incredible story, but man, hey, it's true. So the next player on my list is the obvious one, Rick Berry. And this is actually a very sad story, to be honest. Why? Because that guy is known for his granny shot, even though he's one of the best players who ever played in the NBA. That guy almost averaged 25 points, 6.7 rebounds, 4.9 assists, was an NBA champion, one of the best players in NBA history. By the way, I got a podcast with him. If you want to listen to it, just take a look at my channel. So we're talking about an all-time great, but still he's remembered for the granny shot. Why? Because he's the guy who actually did it almost throughout his entire career. And what can you say? He made it work. He's an 89% free throw shooter over his entire NBA career. So one of the best of all time. When discussing impact players, few were better than Rick Barry. Barry was an immediate success as he won Rookie of the Year honors in 1966, only to follow it up with a scoring title and an all-star MVP. During that sophomore season, he was cited as one of the purest shooters ever to play. Starring with Golden State from 72 through 78, where he would lead the franchise to its lone Bay Area Championship in 1975. And Barry, Barry's got it, the ball game is over! The ball game is over! Rick Barry in possession of the ball! As the final second tipped off, and out of those Golden State Warriors are champions of the world! They are the unbelievable champions of the world! 
Known for his underhanded free throw shooting technique, Barry shot 90% from the charity stripe for his career. With a career scoring average of 25 points per game, Barry is the only player ever to lead the NCAA, ABA, and NBA in scoring. An underrated passer, the 6'7 Barry averaged nearly five assists from the forward position. The New Jersey native was named to the Hall of Fame after eight All-Star appearances and being named First Team All-NBA five times. No warrior will ever get to don the number 24, Rick Barry, the greatest Golden State Warrior ever. And the next one on our list is a pretty recent one. Oh God, I hope I really pronounced the name right. China Nu Onwaku from the Houston Rockets. That one actually made me really happy because a young player recognizing that he has a weakness, doing whatever it takes to improve his game, not caring too much about what other people think and working on his weaknesses. And even though he didn't stay long in the NBA, from me he gets a lot of respect for that decision and I would really hope to see him back in the NBA. Make it a a basketball appearance, but Julia is the baseball reporter uh, for the Astros. Looks like they're going to have a very good year coming up. I hope so. There it is. Underhand. Oh, he makes it. This young man was shooting terribly from the free throw line at Louisville. He switched to underhanded after his freshman year. And he has gone from a bad free throw shooter to an excellent free throw shooter. You just don't see young kids doing this anymore, but he can make them. He's got a great touch. Two for two. What's up, y'all? This is Janana Onawaku from the Vipers and the Houston Rockets organization. Uh, today, I will be explaining how I do my underhand free throw. Uh, first came about, Coach P, when I was at Louisville, came up to me, asked me if I would try it. And, you know, just me being a basketball player, just trying to get better. I said, yeah. So, first week, you know, he taught me a little bit, and then he gave me a video of Rick Berry. So, I watched the video, and, like, Took his style and like combined them with my style. I mean, it's not a secret that bigs always had more problems shooting free throws than guards or wing players. But I always was wondering why couldn't they figure a way out? Because there are bigs who can shoot free throws. It's just crazy. The underhand free throw is such a high percentage shot, and I know it doesn't look cool and it's not the, the flashiest way how you can shoot your free throws, but I experienced it for myself. Um, I shot it as a basketball player. Not for an entire season, I just tried it out and I gotta be honest, I actually shot a higher percentage shooting that way. And I was I was always thinking, okay, what would have happened if Shaquille O'Neal actually considered to shoot that way? But apparently he never wanted to. Shaquille O'Neal was talking with Business Insider and here's what he had to say. Quote, I'd rather, I told Rick Barry I'd rather shoot 0% than shoot underhand. I am too cool for that. Jalen. Is being too cool to shoot underhand, even if it could improve your free throw percentage, a soft move or a boss move? Only for Shaq. He was the coolest big guy to play in the NBA since Wilt Chamberlain. For those who don't know about the Big Dipper, he epitomized cool for all decades. He put up numbers on and off the floor that have been and will always be unmatched. But for Shaquille O'Neal, a fun-loving big, that accomplished so much, a four-time champion, an all-time great, he could get away with a comment like that because he still was able to find ways to achieve things that most people, mere mortals like myself, would never get close to. But you can't, if you're not him, actually fix your mouth to say this as an active player because that's not something media fans and coaches, and particularly your teammates, want to hear. Hmm. This is a pretty tough one. I mean, I understand where Shaq is coming from, but honestly, if your highest goal is to win championships and it's all about winning, I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest, that he didn't even try it because at the end, it's about winning, not about looking cool. So, but that's just me. I gotta tell you, every time I'm watching one of these NBA games and I'm seeing these professional basketball players shoot 50%. It's pretty pathetic, isn't it? It is, and the first thing I think about is why would they not at least try? My style. Yes. I'm always wondering that too. I don't understand it. I can understand. See, when I was young and I, my father got tried to get me to do it, I said, Dad, this is the way the girls shoot. Girls don't shoot that way anymore. So, and you know, the women don't shoot that way either. So why in the world would somebody not want to try anything at all to get better at what they do? All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time. Peace. I'm out. 
Hey you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.